Good afternoon, my name is Georgia Carnaby and for today's Roundabout Story I'm going to be sharing with you Connie Huck and James Kay's Little Red Riding in the Hood. I really hope you enjoy it. Little Red Riding was an up-and-coming fashion designer, well known in her neighbourhood. Locals loved wearing her outfits and when she first launched Little Red Riding hoodies, they sold out instantly. The hoodies, inspired by a cloak that her grandmother had made her, were made in a variety of different colours, but were especially popular in red. Red lived on the rough estate with her mum and dad, Mr and Mrs Riding. People often referred to the estate as the hood, because calling it the rough estate made it sound like an undesirable place to live, when in fact it had been named by Ernest Ruff, the world-famous architect who had designed it. Red loved the estate. It was lively and crammed full of people from all different walks of life. Granny Riding had lived there ever since it was built in the 1960s. She had even met Ernest Ruff once. Although she loved seeing her friends and neighbours wearing her designs, Red wanted the whole world to wear her clothes. A tricky feat for a girl from the hood, her granny would say, but if anyone can do it, you can. Red knew that to really hit the big time, she would need something extra eye-catching for her spring to summer catwalk collection at the forthcoming Fairy Tale Fashion Week. Something with the wow factor. Unfortunately, she was all out of ideas and for the last few days had been driving herself crazy trying to figure out what to make. A wolf wool waistcoat? Chainmail undies, glass pyjamas with matching glass slippers. To make matters worse, Red also had her granny to worry about. Granny Riding had put her back out after a rather nasty weightlifting injury and was unable to get out of bed. Red decided to take her over some homemade gingerbread to cheer her up. Red loved visiting Granny, who was by far the most fascinating person she knew. She often recounted tales of men she'd kissed who turned into frogs. Or other men she'd kissed who turned into toads. Ooh. But Red especially loved hearing about how fashion was back then. The shift dresses of the 60s, the kaftans of the 70s, the shoulder pads of the 80s and the combat trousers of the 90s. And a whole other host of inspirational designs between and beyond. Granny Riding had the most stylish wardrobe of vintage clothes Red had ever seen. Yet another inspiration for Red's rad designs. Be careful when walking through the hood said Mrs. Riding, as, as Red was putting her cloak on. I don't want you getting caught up in any trouble. Don't worry about me, Mum, said Red. I can take care of myself. As she made her way across a rough estate, Red spotted a stylish girl in a vintage tea dress and super cool cowboy boots topped off with one of Red's trademarked hoodies. Red smiled to herself. Another happy customer. But as she got closer, Red realised that a bully was throwing sticks and stones at the girl. Hey! shouted Red. Stop that right now or you'll break her bones! The bully ran off before Red could give them a proper piece of her mind. Red approached the girl, who was clearly shaken up. And as she got closer, she realised it wasn't a girl at all. It was a boy. Hey! I love your outfit, said Red. Thanks, said the boy, instantly starstruck at the sight of Little Red Riding. I'm Wolf, I'm a massive fan of your clothes. I have your hoodies in every colour, including the limited edition woodcutter design. That's my favourite. Thanks, said Red. The image of the woodcutter symbolises strength and drive. Sometimes the axe feels heavy, but the woodcutter has to keep chopping or there'll be no firewood. I guess that's how life can be sometimes. That's so cool, said Wolf. Everything you say is so cool. 
I read what you said in that interview you did with Vague magazine. Oh, you're really talented. I don't feel so talented at the moment, said Red. I can't seem to come up with anything for my upcoming show at Fashion Week. Think woodcutter, said Wolf. You've totally got the drive and strength to work it out. Enough about me, said Red. Are you okay? Why don't you come with me to my granny's for a cup of tea and a gingerbread man? She used to be a doctor. She can take a look at those nasty grazes for you. As Granny tended to his cuts and bruises, Wolf explained how much he loved woman's fashion, but always got bullied for wearing it. Granny listened intently. You must be roasting under that big duvet, Granny, said Red, pulling it back to reveal the intricately stitched nighty that Granny was wearing. Red had designed it for her when she had become bed bedridden. Wow, said Wolf. I simply love that piece you're wearing. The craftsmanship is exquisite. It's one of a collection, Red said, pointing to the other nighties she's handmade for her granny. Red, these are mind-blowing, shrieked Wolf with delight. I've never seen anything like it. Try one on, my dear, suggested Granny. It's such a shame no one ever gets to admire them. I don't get many visitors in my bedroom these days. Wolf didn't hesitate and immediately slipped one over his head. It looked stunning. Sequins gleaming in among brightly coloured embroidery, all framed with an immaculate ta tailoring. There was then the standout centrepiece, a beautifully hand-stitched sparkling outline of a woodcutter sewn delicately in glistening silver thread. Wolf's eyes lit up. Red, you must show these nighties in your next catwalk show. You'll be the talk of the town. <gasps> Granny's eyes lit up too. Yes, you must, Red. There'll be a huge hit. Now, Red's eyes lit up. She'd had an idea. <gasps> and you must model them, Wolf. They look incredible on you. Wolf could hardly believe his luck. He'd never worn anything a thousandth as beautiful or as artistic. Weeks later, when Granny had fully recovered, she found herself in the front row of the Spring Summer Catwalk Show at Fairy Tale Fashion Week. She was squashed between the fearsome editor of Vague magazine, Anna Winter is Coming, and Skinny Rake, the world's most famous catwalk model and the face of sugar and spice and all things nice perfume. Granny, Granny decided to try and make conversation with Skinny, but she was a girl of few words. What big eyes you have, said Granny. All the better for modelling with, said Skinny. What big lips you have. All the better for modelling with, said Skinny. What big teeth you have. All the better for lucrative toothpaste endorsements, replied Skinny. Lovely dear, said Granny. The show was a massive success and Red and Wolf received a huge standing ovation. I would like to dedicate this show to my Granny, the inspiration for all of my clothes, said Red over thunderous applause. And then it was Granny's turn to receive a standing ovation. In the weeks that followed, Wolf quickly became Britain's next top model, renowned for his non-conformist and authentic looks. Meanwhile, boys and girls across the globe began wearing Little Red Riding nighties, often teamed with their Little Red Riding hoodies. And no one was prouder than Granny when Red Riding was voted Fashion Designer of the Year by Vague magazine. Little Red Riding had become big. We know that times are tough and that's why our roundabout stories are free for you to view. But if you would like to make a donation, we would be very grateful. Your gift could help us deliver drama therapy support to children and vulnerable adults who are really struggling at this time of heightened anxiety and isolation. You can make a real difference to people living with trauma, disabilities and challenging mental health issues. Thank you for your support.